What is going on, my game design gurus? You're joining me, your host, Max Pears. And today is a really cool episode. Instead of releasing part two of the concept one, I thought after it being two weeks from E3 that I'd actually do a special E3 episode. So, let's get into it. I hope you are doing well and enjoying yourselves playing and making the games that you love, guys and girls. Thank you for joining me on the latest episode of the podcast. So this is kind of more of a spontaneous uh, episode. What was supposed to be next was actually part two of the concept uh, interview I had with Vord and Martha. But instead I decided to talk about E3 um, primarily because it was my first E3 and I know a lot of people you know, want to go to E3 and to show off the game they've been working at E3. So I thought it'd be very interesting to talk about my experience. It's the first time I also went to America and kind of showing, kind of sharing my experience, you know what I mean, from this, from this thing and from the expo and talking about that really. So let's just jump straight into it. As I said, this is my very first E3, so I didn't know really what to expect. (laughs) <laughs> sadly for me it didn't start off on the best foot as I was actually supposed to be at the Microsoft um, conference where they revealed uh, Cyberpunk 2077 but due to my flight being cancelled I had to fly the next day and was unable to to make that so that was pretty pretty sad for me because it was really interesting well I was more nervous and excited to actually be there and see the people's reactions live but overall, I think it's safe to say that the reaction was very, very well received. So I'm happy, happy with that. Um, so my role actually for C Project Red, uh, while on this trip, was to give interviews. You probably, if you follow me on Twitter or are a member of the Patreon, then you will have seen some of the articles and interviews online, and you can probably search. Um, that sounds like a humble brag. <laughs> it's not. Um, You'll you'll see that I've I've done that. So that was my kind of role during that uh during that time period. There's some really cool things. So let's break down what we did at uh, E3. For those who don't know, so I'm saying so a lot. So I apologize. <laughs> what happened was we at the end of the Microsoft conference we showed our new trailer for the game which was very, very well done to all the members of the team who worked on the trailer, a massive shout out to them and to the people who worked with Microsoft who were able to help us do the, do the launch with the, the illusion of looking like we hacked it, that sort of thing. Cause that really added to the atmosphere of what had been shown. Just move the mic a little bit closer to my mouth. Uh, and that was really brilliant as they all did an amazing job. Now, what people don't realize is that's only the first, these conferences that you're seeing, these these are just the first and the beginning parts of E3 because most of the public will just kind of watch that and that's kind of the end of E3 for some of them, just, just because it's showing all the latest thing. But after that, what happens is there'll be the exhibit halls, which is where people will go play play all these games or see the trailers and talk to the developers. Also, you'll have big uh, big media crews such as games about IGN and others set up where they bring developers on the stage to talk about the games, which obviously you can see streaming online. And for us, though, what we had was a... It wasn't a booth on the main exhibition hall, but it was a, a booth kind of up upstairs, upstairs still in the, the, the building. And it was really cool. I'm um, see if I can pull up some pictures if you're watching the video on YouTube, but if not, I'll tweet them out uh, so you can see them as well at the same time this goes up. We had a really cool booth, so I really want to thank the, uh, I believe it was the team in LA and I think a few others, but primarily the team in LA who did an amazing job on setting this place up. It looked incredible. Honestly, I was blown away by this. Like. It was a it was a bar taken from uh, from the game. We even had 
some of the drinks well sorry all the drinks with the the brands from from the game so that was really really nice there and then they had this amazing like massive screen which was to give the illusion of a window showing night city things moving around in night city as if you were looking down upon upon it and it was great it built so much amazing atmosphere so we had people that would come in and wait till they could go see the demo so they'd stand here mingle get a drink we had a bartender and it was amazing to see that to have all these people there <laughs> and then what would happen after is we'd go show the the demo so we bring in i can't remember how many people it was there's was quite a lot of people we went through but we brought in x many people per showing and we'd show off the game the, the demo of our game for about 40 to 50 minutes it's quite a long demo but the reason that we did this was obviously to to show you the progress that we've been making and everything so it was great people that were presenting that it was not a video i just want to state that for the record someone was actually playing through this in the game after after that then people who had uh, appointments would come through the media and speak to uh, myself as well as the other interviewer interviewees who did an amazing thing as well and we chat about the game and answer the questions which you'll now see online on the articles this was uh, like a truly amazing and surreal experience that i don't think i've fully kind of s let sink in because not only was it at e3 and I, i'm sure for many of you because it was for me it was one of those things i really wanted to do and have on my bucket list you know growing up before making these video games you got to see all kinds of amazing things happen there and i think e3 as well is just a massive celebration of games i know some people might not feel that way because it's a lot of kind of marketing and showing the games but the people that are there really just want to see new amazing games because we're all gamers we're all excited and even as devs you know <laughs> we are so nervous to show <laughs> but we're excited for you all to see it and that's something that you know we're happy about and especially from cyberpunk side where the, it's been received so well it's insane like honestly it's insane my my phone blew up when the trailer dropped the amount of people that are messaging me and which is amazing because people took notice so i can't even begin to say how that that feels to, to know that people are really interested in what you're making because when you're making a game as many of you know you're kind of in a, a bubble a vacuum we don't always get to see the reaction because you are only seeing the part of the game that you're working on so to, to see people's reaction has been beautiful I mean, absolutely beautiful so thank ever thank you to everyone who's had a reaction whether it be good or bad thank you because it's shown your passion and that's the most important thing for me is that we have passionate players and we have passionate fans so thank you uh, as for the interviews we can go talk about them this was really cool <laughs> super nerve-wracking i'll tell you that much though because as you know I, I do this podcast i've written articles i've done interviews back when i was at ubisoft as well as for other things I've given talks and presentations at school so I, i've kind of done speaking and not that i'm saying i'm master of it i'm not as you can hear me say so multiple times in this episode the other element though that's really interesting is because when you're an indie developer you kind of can say what you feel you want to say I, I feel from my experience you can give as much or as little as you want but obviously when you're working for a company there's only so much you you can say at the time and are allowed to say <laughs> and I just remember when my first interview went live I can't even remember I think it was in um, oh, it, was, it was in an interview with uh, in with uh, an amazing uh, Brazilian man so it was in Portuguese I don't speak Portuguese so I, I don't even know if it went down well so that was nerve wracking I think that's really uh, that's part of the fun of it though but it's also great to chat to journalists as well. I've met some amazingly nice people when doing this. Truthfully, like I've had them drop me messages, drop me tweets and stuff to say thank you and to tell me that my stuff has gone up online. They've put links to the podcast, all this amazing stuff. So I'm grateful for that as well because I got to have a joke with 99% of them 
the other ones I didn't have a joke with I think that was more just because of language barriers between us that's all they were still very very nice people and it's really cool to chat to journalists as well because they're also fans I got to speak to fans as well which was amazing that was cool and yeah like interviewing is really interesting as well because you want to say a lot of things but you kind of know you can't and it's about phrasing things the right way and holding your kind of composure as well in terms of certain things but it was great you know honestly to all the people who had the fortune the fortune to speak to thank you again for for chatting to me as well a massive shout out i met some uh, some amazing people honestly thank you again I'll, I'll link to some stuff below of like interviews with me as some really really cool people so you can see that and you can see more on the game's details as well the fans wow the fans are amazing someone waited to see the demo at something crazy like 7 30 on the last day am and i don't think we started till nine i want to say the first presentation wasn't till nine so thank you for being that passionate honestly like we appreciate the passion you know there's always a question i got asked at the end of the interviews which was do you have any words for the italian korean uh, chinese japanese brazilian fans the thing is to me is like we are so grateful for all of you uh, you know <laughs> without gamers and we're all gamers you know like we as devs we all love playing games so this was a crazy crazy thing to see and we you know we appreciate all of you like you sharing your opinions and just chatting to us honestly it's been a crazy thing as well oh what i'll say also about the interviews which i thought was really really cool is that different angles in terms of how people perceive the demo i think that was really really nice like some people want to spend more time talking about the the city how that would work what's the kind of plans for it others want to talk more about vehicles and the the kind of uh, the combat that we have in the game and then i had a really nice uh, chat with and i'm really sorry i've forgotten her name but there's a, a nice chat with um a woman from mashable and she was more interested on the uh oh man what is the correct word for this but uh Oh, I've forgotten the word for it, so I'm not going to try and embarrass myself by saying it, but more about like how you can change and morph your the your body in terms of with your cybernetics. So it was really interesting just to hear what each person took away from from the game. Okay, and we'll talk now about like the event itself and kind of what to expect with certain things. The event itself is an interesting place in terms of because it's not. Compared to something like GDC or these other more dev orientated uh, conferences that I've been to, there's obviously chances for networking if you would like to try that, but that is not its primary reason for being there. There, if, you know, there's a lot of amazing people that you're going to chat to with it, but it's primarily going to. Uh, going to be fans because i believe e3s it was from not this e3 but the e3 before stayed open to the public so you you meet more fans which is great um so you can expect to have more of an interaction with people uh, like that as a dev which is really really cool because i had a lot of people come up to me and just chat but here is a really really good point that i do want to make for people uh, if you are just wanting to chat to devs introduce yourself first honestly the amount of people that came up to me and just asked a question and everything without just an introduction was more than i thought i'd ever experience and i don't think anyone's being rude when i'm saying that just from my perspective from that is you know we want to answer questions but we also want to get to know you you know this we're not just a walking encyclopedia we're also humans you know and have that interaction it's much more of a memorable thing if we you know shake hands and say our names i think that's always an important thing so do that i do have a funny story i'm not gonna say who it was involving it wasn't me for the record but um <laughs> someone who was uh, working on can i say all right i hope this didn't get in trouble this is a story again of how to act sorry how you shouldn't act when you're at any kind of expo or conference so Fortnite were there. Honestly, their booth was insane. Like, 
wow that one was one of the best booths like looking visually uh, in, in my opinion other than Cyberpunk Tomb Raider was also very good we'll get onto them a little bit later but this um, one of the guys who's working on the Fortnite booth he went to go to, to the toilet to you know to relieve his bladder and when he was there someone tapped him on the back and was because Fortnite were giving away these exclusive E3 pins this guy's like oh can I get a pin and I don't think I have to tell you how ridiculously rude that is just don't do that just don't the guy's trying to you know I think it's always nerve-wracking to ask people, but pick pick your time and place. Doing it while he's trying to pee, come on. So <laughs> a good a good lesson to be learned. Two there. One, say your name when you meet people. And two, don't try to talk to people and especially ask people when, uh, <laughs> when they're going to the toilet. Come on. We had a good laugh about that. That was crazy. Uh, going on to the the booze then so it's much more of like I said an announcement and a celebration of these games so you've got big booze normally with some sort of um, theme to them to relate to the game as I said we had the bar but a few which blew me away was uh, was one Fortnite I'm not a huge Fortnite player I've only played it a few times just just because it's, it's not my cup of tea nothing wrong with the game I think it's really cool and uh you should have seen it they had like the the bus where you should jump out of and that prop up there you can take your picture with they're hanging free uh, llama ice creams which if anyone knows me my weakness is ice cream so you know i was there they had the crates and then they had like raised area for people to play the game that was super amazing tomb raider had an amazing one because they made it inside to where all the the computers were to play the game it was kind of made outside by all these nice ruins and stuff like with the foliage down the side it was brilliant they had a couple of cosplayers just out front as well some amazing stuff with that one uh quick side note to the cosplayers who uh helped us out it was a couple i've forgotten the names but the the guy is primarily known for doing Geralt he did such a very very great job of Geralt but him and his wife did play the character v and they looked uh, amazing so again i've told them before they left but thank you to them they did an amazing job i think they looked incredible uh what other cool ones were there division two that was good to see because as many you know i worked in the original division so i was really excited because i got to meet up with old friends which honestly was amazing it's great to see people it's a small industry but you know that's back in england and i live in poland it was amazing to see them and some of them live out in sweden now they were just just great to see and it's nice to see division two because you know although i've left uh division's always gonna have a very fond place in my heart because of it being the first triple a game i've made and it's great to see that i think the environment looks really interesting in terms of like one of the things that division does really well despite what he says is making the cover not stand out when you get into into like cover based shooters a lot of the times you can walk into the level already knowing that combat's going to happen but that organic feel that the vision brings and I'm obviously biased is amazing with it looking natural and not so on your face that this is cover so it looks great to me the gameplay is very similar to the first there is some smaller I think there are some big changes as well but you know they didn't show everything obviously at e3 but they did show some amazing stuff so thank you to the guys and girls who you know allowed me to play and you know i'm glad i got to see you all you know miss you very much uh what else is there to chat about mm, i just think for me that this was just an amazing thing like honestly to be there and i want to give a shout out to as well uh just let me get the name up a oh, man <laughs> I hope I pronounced now. Adam Adam Corgilone. I do not think I pronounced that name correctly, but he's uh, works at Insomniac. Uh, I believe Dan was the other one. They came up to me when I was in the store buying uh, buying some Sony goodies and chatting about the game. So it was really awesome to chat with me them. Like we met with other developers, and that was super cool. Like I said, it's not the biggest networking event, but you know you get to meet all these amazing people, and it was great for that. 
to, to chat with all these brilliant people who are making some amazing games as well as you know Insomniac who are working on Spider-Man Spider-Man's my favourite superhero so it's great to just chat with all these people about everything I guess we can talk about other people I met so I had the great great honour to meet one of my heroes in the industry which is Hideo Kojima <sighs> I'm not really a starstruck person. I've seen quite a few celebrities, but not been that eh, fussed. But when I met Mr. Kojima, that was a uh, starstruck moment. You know, that was amazing. Honestly, it's uh, he inspired me to get into video games. So to meet him was a true, true honor. Got to meet uh, Tim Schafer. Um, he was awesome, uh, Warren Spector. That was really very, very nice, mellow dude, and um, and I met some more amazing people. I saw Miyamoto, but that dude was surrounded by thirty bodyguards in a circle. It was insane, like yeah, purely insane to see that. Uh, but no, there's got to meet some of them, and that was a great thing as well, and. Got to meet uh, Boogie from YouTube. He is one of the most soundest people out there, honestly. He said something that I really enjoyed because he's a very famous man as well. The amount of people that are coming to ask to talk, take photos with him. But he came up and spoke about the game and then he came over and we were chatting. And I was just oh, you know, thank you for the videos and stuff. I'm, me and my brother are a fan of your work. And he's like, he said something that was really nice and it was really good to hear because, again, you're kind of in a moment kind of rushing around. And I think this applies to all developers, and especially it was great to hear at E3. He said, don't thank me, you guys are the rock stars. This is your moment, you're making something amazing. That was really nice to hear from someone who is getting a lot of attention, but he's bringing the attention back on the developers. I sometimes feel that not everyone does that, but for him to say that I thought was an amazing, amazing thing. So thank you for those words. Okay, that was some most of my experience as well from that. But I'm going to answer some questions. So these questions come from the amazing people on Discord. You know who you are. I absolutely love chatting with you all super, super much, honestly. And if you do want to join in and ask some more questions, then do hop onto the Patreon. There'll be a link down below. And you can join our community where we've got some really, really amazing stuff. Okay. Let's go through some of these questions. Snow asks, what were, what was the criteria for you to be chosen to go? That's a very interesting one. Each studio kind of does it differently. Um, you know, Ubisoft does uh, a, a lot more on kind of rank and who's been working on the demo. We at CD Projekt Red kind of held auditions for it. Um, and that was, I can't say what the auditions were, but we held auditions for this, so then people are selected on on certain skills. So I was fortunate enough that my audition was good enough. Um, I, I practiced a lot for it, and that was able to allow me to be chosen chosen for this event. Uh, <laughs> Brad Butcher asks, uh, "Where's the MP4 for the behind closed doors demo?" Uh, <laughs> We're keeping it behind closed doors right now. So that's all I can really say on that one, my friend. And then he asks, well, some of these I won't be able to answer, mate. So if I do skip some, it's just more due to NDA. And I'm not sure if I'm allowed to answer them. And I don't really want to get in trouble for this. So <laughs> let's try not to. All right. How long did it take to prep the demo slash trailer for E3? Now, I can't give a, uh, a timeline on this. I just want to say though, that the team worked extremely hard to get all of this to get all of this right. You know, there was a, a lot of thought behind this process and trying to make sure that everything wasn't just good, it was perfect. And then that was a very big thing. So the team, I can't say in time, but all I can say is the team worked extremely hard to make sure and spend a lot of time <clears throat> revisiting and revising certain things to to push it to the, the quality that CD Projekt Red is known for. And then he asks, how does it feel as one of the developers of a game to get such immensely positive reaction slash impression? I touched on this a little bit earlier. 
it's kind of surreal because I don't think it's hit me hit me yet and I had people come up to me face to face and say how much they love it like it's it's a strange it, right it's amazing firstly let's state that before I say anything else I think the interesting part is, is like you wish the rest of your team could be there to hear these kind words as well because there's a lot of people working on this game and it's great for me to hear it, but I'd love for the rest of the team to hear this because it's such a surreal thing and I really wish everyone could hear it because sometimes just hearing that can give you that extra push of motivation to keep, you know, to keep going and keep pushing that you know that you're doing the right thing. I think it's, to, to me, it's going to be something I'm always going to remember because it's not only my first time at E3, but to be showing off Cyberpunk as well yeah no it's been a truly truly amazing amazing thing for that one next ones guys from water malone i do love that name so much he asked how many of the conferences did i go to sadly as i said i wasn't able to go to any due to the fact that my plane was cancelled otherwise i would have i think i only had tickets for the microsoft one uh for me personally but uh i don't know i think some of the other guys went to all of them uh sorry to to them so yeah uh, sadly i didn't because of plane i will say the trip the flights to and from was awful so all i can say is british airways and american airlines just you are some of the worst honestly disgusting but sadly I didn't get to go to anyone so so as how's the food in la some of it's really nice some of it sucked um i don't like the whole tipping culture in america it's not for me and the reason i you know this is my thoughts and my opinions the reason i don't like it is for a couple of reasons one tip should be earned in terms of it's good service even if it's bad you have to tip in america i feel the staff should just be paid a livable wage and then like a tip should actually be a tip um, but as for the food we had uh, this Chinese, because in Poland they don't have really that nice a Chinese, <laughs> but here in, sorry, in LA, I can't remember what it was called, but it was absolutely, oh, beautiful. It was beautiful. And then we went to the, I think it was called, what was it called? I went for breakfast later on. I can't remember where it was. It was a really nice place, and that was amazing. Sounded so, sorry, tasted so good, this nice breakfast. Because getting good avocados in Poland is very hard, where compared to California, you know, avocados for days, decades. So that was some of it. I didn't get a chance to eat like some of these In-N-Out burgers and other things that people talk about. So that was a shame. But uh, the portion size is very different to Europe as well. But overall, it's good. So he then goes on to ask, "What is the biggest culture shock from coming from Europe?" Uh, there's quite a few tipping as i said being a more mandatory thing uh, is very different um poland's a lot more of a reserved country as well um so when you think about service and stuff i mean obviously there's a there's a language barrier with me and uh, the polish people anyway but in England, we'll normally be like, hey, how's your day going? Yeah, not bad, thank you. How are you doing? And it's quite casual, casual about it. In America, it's, I feel it's a bit more, even further than England with its politeness and energy. It's it's very, <laughs> that was a big culture shock, going from where no one wants to talk to you to suddenly everyone wants to know your details. That was a big, a big thing. Driving everywhere. Like, it seems like it's a... <laughs> The crazy thing it's not you're not allowed to walk anywhere that uh, i know you are but it seems that everyone drives a lot more compared to in europe so that was one of the big ones uh venice beach is crazy in a multitude of ways it's a great place but it's crazy how the, you know the poor and i don't want to say the rich but people with more of a stable living kind of coexist that's a very interesting one from a from an outside perspective if you don't know i mean if you ever get a chance to go there you'll see what i mean when you go down there but those are some of the big culture shocks uh, for me uh was it your first time at e3 uh if it isn't what would you do differently next time so it was my first time what would i do differently next time that's an interesting one 
Me, I made sure I went down to the showroom floor. I know some of the people didn't. Obviously, we are working, but I did make sure I made time to do that because I think it's important for you to take it all in. And, you know, I don't know when the next time I'll go to E3 is because I said it's auditions, you know, next next time uh, C Project Red goes, maybe I won't go with them. I don't know. So I really just tried to take as much of it in as I could. I think that was really important um, in terms of seeing everything. I think that was big. Uh, what else would I do differently? I think when it comes to the interviews, it wasn't till like about midway through the second day and the third day, I was kind of more in my groove. I was kind of more relaxed. I think the stress of making sure you give a good interview but you don't give anything away can kind of you know, make you nervous a bit more. So I think uh, just try loosen up and really just enjoy these conversations. I think, because I did enjoy them, but like I said, when you're kind of focusing on uh, just on just being nervous, I think I just wish I could have loosened up a bit more, a bit earlier, should I say. That would be it. To me, I feel I 100% made the most of that, my time there. So I'm that's what I'm happy about with it at all. Did I have the time to look at the showroom floor? If you did, what did I check out? So, so no, I didn't get a chance to really get hands on with anything, but I walked around the show floor, watched some people play. There's an interesting game. I can't remember what's called like Nin Ninja. I can't remember the example, but it's for Switch, and it's you are these like bubblegum ninjas. It looks interesting. Kind of has a Splatoon feeling to it, so I hope it lives up and delivers like Splatoon that was cool Spider-Man looked really great I didn't get a chance to play it but it looked great Kingdom Hearts 3 Jesus Christ I can't wait for that one I didn't get a chance to play a demo I queued for it but just sadly missed out <sighs> they look like they're really pushing it Square Enix and I will say I cannot wait for that game that was one of my my personal picks for sure I think that looked great so Charles then asks uh, E3, was there anything you didn't like? What irritated you or caught you off guard? Straight with the hard question, Charles. Got to make it more negative. I'm messing with you, mate. Um, so, caught me off guard uh, would probably be the amount of people that come up to you because um, you are wearing the cyberpunk gear, and that kind of caught me off guard. I think that was a. I think I was like, whoa you know because I'm I'm a game developer I've been doing it for a long time but I've never really felt like a rock star there's certain conferences you feel it but not like majorly but to have people just like rush over and want to just just speak to you more than than uh, the normal was very surreal kind of experience uh, I wasn't annoyed by that that was just something that just caught me off guard the thing that annoyed me it's probably going back to people just just introduce yourself you know like it's we're all people, so I just think people should treat people like people. Uh, yeah, just say hi. I think that was a big thing for it. So yeah, that was a uh, one of the things that I just you know just let's just chill about it. Let's just have a conversation because I want to have a conversation, you know, and that, that's all. And also, some of the gear was super expensive at the shops. Knock down those prices. <laughs> okay. Going back to Snow, was there a game you wanted to check out that you couldn't? That goes back to Kingdom Hearts 3. I did miss out on that. I really, really wanted to play that. I'm a huge fan of it. I, Last of Us 2, I don't think was playable on the floor. I would have loved to have uh, to have played that. And Spider-Man as well. Would have loved to have done them. There's more out, out there. But due to time, those would have been the ones I, I personally would have loved to have played. Okay, back to it. Snow asks... Any announcements that you were hoping for that didn't happen? <sighs> I think the sad one about this E3, in, in my opinion, is the fact that everything got leaked. And that kind of just made me a little bit sad about it because I understand people want to know, but can we not be patient? Just because we're going to find out soon and having that surprise of something coming is the excitement for me that's what I you know kind of wish more of that this because this year just felt it was so elite that everyone kind of knew roughly what everything was coming so that probably would have been you know just if, if things didn't get leaked that would have been better for me just so I could have more of a surprise at the event itself 
Brad goes back to kind of related to my last question but something else I was wondering how hard is it as a dev to want to share everything you're working with but having to keep most of it a secret it's a very interesting question mate um, hmm I don't think it's hard I think it's more to do with obviously I want to talk about it I mean I want to talk about it on the podcast but I know I can't but I do know at some point I will be able to later on down the line the thing is is you've just got to have trust in your PR and marketing team because the reason we're doing it is to obviously to to get you all interested you know we if we gave everything away it kind of ruined the surprise for the game and we don't want that we want you to be blown away not only at these demos and trailers but when the game comes out that's the most important thing is that you are surprised and hooked onto this game so to me it's not that hard i think it's uh it's one of those things because i trust my team you know my, my team is great uh, shout out to bobby who is the head of us for interviews he is a master i got to watch him do interviews only briefly but pfft, very very smart man um so yeah, no, it's just about trust. Obviously we want to, but I'd rather you play it and then we talk about it than tell you about it. Because telling you about some about a game can't give you the proper experience of a video game. So to me, you know, when the game launches, we're going to be able to talk about, about it all. So I'd rather you play it first and you enjoy and are amazed and love the the figuring out of that game other than us spoil it for you that's that's also why i'm okay with keeping things secret in that and that's it from the question side everyone so thank you all very much for the questions i hope they uh i hope you like the answers i just want to say again i loved going to e3 this was by far one of my favorite things i've ever got to do it is an amazing amazing experience so to all my teammates from all the other studios, because there was quite a few people that I hadn't met before as well, thank you for making my first experience an amazing time. Thank you to the fans and the journalists who made my experience super amazing. Just thank you. Like It's been a great thing, and I hope that you one day you all get to go to and experience it as well. So that's all we have time for now. Uh, this one's going to be kind of edited as well. So this is going to be a mad kind of rush out. I've probably not helped myself with the length of the episode. But I thought it was worth sharing. If you have any more questions, please do tweet me at Max Pears or leave a comment down below. If you have, uh, if you do want to contact me alternatively, you can email me, leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. If you do want to ask questions that we bring up on here, and do want to be part of the community because the community is growing and again thank you to everyone who's part of the community so the first month just over the first month of level design lobby and you've all been amazing so thank you all again if you want to be part of it though do check on the patreon there will be a link that's how we keep improving the podcast and making sure that we deliver on something that's getting even better and better so thank you all very very much i will catch you all next time <laughs>